might be interested in doing using the z-scores is finding out the percentage of area under the normal curve. What this really means is we're trying to find out what is the percentage that either falls above a particular z-score, below a certain z-score, or maybe between certain z-scores. Now a lot of times you'll be given the raw score and you'll have to calculate the z-scores in order to find out those areas. So if we were for example, wanting to know how what is the percentage of individuals that fall above a raw score of 80. So they got above an 80 on this exam. We would have to, of course, find the z-score first, which we've already done that in the first part of this tutorial. So we don't have to calculate this again. We already know what uh, those z-scores are. So I've went ahead and put those in the table up here. So you can see that they're highlighted up here at the top. So the ones that we're going to be using for this demonstration of areas under the normal curve, I've already highlighted here, so we have them for quick reference. So the table that I'm using here demonstrates area under the normal curve between the mean and z. Now, you'll have to make sure that the table you're referring to or using is similar to this, or it may be different. Make sure you understand what areas are being presented. Oftentimes, it will tell you what the area is simply below a z-score, so all of the area below a z-score, not between the mean and that z-score. So be sure to uh, note either in a graph that probably will be above this table in your book or in the information provided at the top of the table, what areas are actually being provided because it does differ from text to text in terms of what tables they use. I'm going to be using this one that demonstrates the area between the mean, so the midpoint, which of course will be at zero, and whatever our z-score is. So for example, we have a z-score of 0.71 for a raw score of 80. So if we look in the table, it will give us this area right here between zero and 0.71 by looking in our table. So if we look in our table for 0.71, we can see we need to look down into the first column, we go down until we see 0.7. So that's at the tenths place uh, in terms of decimal points. So we see the 0.7. Now, of course, this is 0.71, so we need to move over until we get into the column that demonstrates the hundredths place. So in this case right here, if we move across to where it's 0.71, we get an area of 26.11. The area in our curve right here is 26.11. So that really means the percentage. So the percentage of area that falls between 0 and a z-score of 0.71 is 26.11%. 26.11% is the percentage of scores that fall in that area. Let's do some uh, calculations to determine what some of these other areas might be in relation to the z-score. For example, let's say we wanted to know what were the percentage of individuals who scored above this in our distribution. So we don't want to know the area between 0 or the mean and 0.71, we want to know what the area is above that. The percentage of individuals who fall above and below 0 in a normal distribution is 50%. So if we want to know the area that is above 0.71, what we can do is take that 50% and subtract the area that's below that number into the mean, and that will give us that area that's in between. By doing this, we're taking the entire area above the mean, subtracting that area from 0 to 0.71 to get the area above that. It does take in a little extra calculation in order to do this, but we can see here easily it is just a subtraction of 26.11 from 50. So this tells us that 23.89% of the area falls above a z-score of 0.71. So thinking back, our raw score of 80 is equivalent to our z-score of 0.71, so that means that 23.89% of the individuals in our distribution, or the scores in our distribution, fall above 80. So that means they would fall into the B or A range. Now what if we want to know all of the area under 80? Now we already know what the area underneath the z-score of 0.71, which corresponds to the raw score of 80, is 26.11%, so the area from the mean to that number. But we also want to know all the area below it, so that includes in the negative direction. So because we know that 50% falls above and 50% falls below, we need to add that 50% to the area between 0 and 0.71. So in this case, instead of subtracting, we're going to be adding to get that entire area. 
So 50 plus 26.1 will give us 76.11%. So 76.11% of the raw scores or participants in this distribution fall below 80. The next calculation we'll do demonstrates how to get the area between two numbers. So in this case, we want to know how many people in our distribution or how many scores in our distribution fell between 80 and 90. So in other words, got a B on our exam. So in this case, we need two z-scores. We need the z-score for the 80. We need the z-score for the 90, which I've highlighted in the table up top. Now, looking at our distribution here, what we want to find, of course, is the area between. So if we write down, let's say, 0.71, that's for 80, okay? So we know we want that, and then we want the area from that number to 2.14, which is the z-score for a raw score of 90. So we want this area between them. But remember, our table only tells us the area from each of these z-scores to zero. So you can see what we might need to do is a little bit of subtraction. What we can take is the entire area from 2.14 to 0 and subtract the area from 0.71 to 0. And if we subtract that, we will get this area right here. So we take the larger of the two numbers, the 2.14, which encompasses the larger area, and if we look in our table, we can see that that corresponds to, let's see, we go down to 2.1 in our first column. We can see 2.1 is here. We go over to the column for 0.4, and that corresponds to an, an area of 48.38. So we take 48.38 and subtract from that 26.11. And that gives us 22.27%. So 22.27% gives us the area in between those two z-scores and also gives us the percentage of uh, individuals or scores in our distribution that falls between a raw score of 80 and a raw score of 90. So hopefully this tutorial was useful in demonstrating the usefulness of z-scores and also how to calculate the area under the normal curve.